So, when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit comes on you. And one of the things he comes with is his might. That's why I keep saying that you already have this might if you are baptized with the Holy Spirit. But that this might is strengthened, is re-energized through praying the Spirit. That's what we did on Friday in prayer meeting. And we're going to continue it this tomorrow, this Wednesday. When you pray in the Spirit, you activate that might already in you. You turn it on. So this scripture, this Ephesians chapter 3, will be our key scripture tomorrow in tomorrow's prayers. We are key scripture. That we will be strengthened with might by your spirit in our inner man. So how do you, as a Christian, re-energize yourself, especially if you are baptized with the Holy Spirit? How do you reactivate this might? Because Isaiah tells us that this spirit, he says the spirit of the Lord is upon him. He says the spirit of the Lord, he listed the several spirits of God, which is part of the things that is being observed in these fall feasts. You know, the menorah, I think there's a, I've forgotten the particular name of that, of that feast around November time, where they, they light the seven candlesticks which represents the seven spirits of God. And one of the spirits there, see the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of understanding, wisdom, um, knowledge, you see might, power. So if you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, the spirit of might comes on you. You have it. That's exactly also what happened to Jesus Christ when he was baptized in water in Jordan. The Bible says that the Spirit descended as a dove on him right there in Jordan. That means that he, was, he also got baptized by the Spirit in Jordan. And the Bible says that this Spirit led him into the wilderness. Hallelujah. Led him to the wilderness. So I want to show you 10 ways then we'll serve communion. Ten ways to re-energize this spirit of might that came upon you at the Holy Ghost baptism. Number one, like I was already quoting, reading for you and telling you about Jesus' baptism of the Holy Spirit. You find that in Luke chapter 4. The Bible says in verse 1, Then Jesus, being filled with the Spirit, with the Holy Spirit, so number one, this strengthening, first, you must be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Any believer that doesn't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit doesn't have access to power. Though he's a child of God, but he will be powerless. That's why Jesus warned his disciples, don't go and preach. Wait for empowerment. Acts chapter 1. Say you shall receive power. So the power, the might, the spirit of might comes at the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So that's number one. Number one. The Holy Ghost baptism. You must have the might first. And you can write Acts chapter 1 verse 8 as your key scripture. You can also write this Luke chapter 4 verse 1 I'm already quoting. Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit was led. He returned from Judah and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. The second point. How do you strengthen how do you re-energize this power, this might that you have? Remember, this throughout this period, we'll be talking about might and power because we are entering serious times in history of man. We're entering serious times when believers must learn to operate in the power of God and understand it. So these are the things. I'm giving you the keys, the tools. And if you're also doing this 10-day fast, also bear this in mind. So number one, you must be baptized the Holy Spirit without it, you don't have might. Number two, number two, follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. You know, I've not really heard this being taught, but somehow impressed somewhere in my mind years back, I knew there was power in listening to the Holy Spirit 
and following the Holy Spirit direction. That is why I preach a lot on it. You hear me say, don't follow the leading of your pastor, don't follow the leading of, of your priest or your prophet, unless it supports, confirms the leading of the Holy Spirit in you. Because one of the ways you know that you're a child of God is that you are led by the Spirit. So you, you are baptized with the Holy Ghost. Number two, you constantly follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Just like Jesus did here. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days of the devil. The Bible says, and in those days he ate nothing. Number three, fasting. The keys to power. Fasting. The leading of the Holy Spirit, fasting. Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And the Bible says that afterward, when he had ended his fasting, he was hungry. And Jesus returned in verse, uh, I think, 13 of Luke chapter 4, verse 13. Say, and Jesus returned from the wilderness back to town, but he did not return the same way he left. But he returned in the power in the power of the Spirit. And that power that he returned with was what announced his name throughout the region. The Bible says that his fame, I think in King James, says his fame in New King James, it says the news of him went out throughout the surrounding region. For 30 years, Jesus had lived on earth with the Holy Ghost on his inside because Jesus was the only man that was born, born again. He did not need to be born again. Why? The sin of Adam did not affect him. So he was born. The way Adam was born before he fell. So he was born, born again. <laughs> he was born, born again. So he had the spirit of God living in him. He had the spirit within. But for 30 years, nobody knew about him. Until the Spirit came upon him and he activated it. That's what we call the baptism of fire. When that baptism of fire came on him, his fame spread. I've, heard, I've seen pastors have come and said, oh, this one that complained. I mean, she's a woman, she's a woman evangelist. She was complaining, Pastor. When, when we've been preaching, we've been doing this, we've been doing that. We've been, where will God announce us? So, oh, where will God announce us? I'm tired. And I started laughing. In my heart, I just said this to her. In my heart, I was like, So, your focus is that is fame. So, you're doing all these things, so you'll be known. That is a wrong motive. But I didn't tell, I didn't tell her that. But you will see people, this is what they want fame, fame, fame. They will not go through the process, they will not go through, they will not pay the price of consecration, the price in fasting and prayer. Jesus paid the price and came out full of power and his fame was spread abroad. So we have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We have the leading of the Spirit. We have prayer. We assume, of course, what he did in the wilderness was prayer. Then he fasted. Okay, I think I told you fasting number three. Fasting number three, add four, prayer. Prayer, four. Apart from being tempted, the bulk of the thing I'm sure he did in the wilderness was praying and fasting. Prayer. The Bible tells us, we just read it now, in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. Paul said, for this reason, I bow my knees <laughs> to what? The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, he was asking that we be strengthened in mind. How do you do it? He did it by prayer. The fifth thing you must note in the journey of power after prayer is waiting on the Lord. So Jesus was praying, he was fasting, he was waiting. Because there was nothing else to do there. There was no TV, there was no Netflix, there was nothing <laughs> in the wilderness. So you have no choice to pray, to fast, and to spend time. Waiting on the Lord, what does it mean? It simply means spending time in God's presence. That's what it simply means. Spend time in God's presence. The prophet Isaiah spoke to us about that in Isaiah 40. You know, you know that popular scripture. Says, even, the, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But he says, But those that wait 
on the Lord shall do what? Shall renew their strength. Since they shall mount up with wings like that of an eagle. Waiting on the Lord re-energizes the spirit of might. Waiting on the Lord strengthens that spirit of might that is already upon you. Number six is the word of the Lord. You see that every temptation that Satan brought to him, he countered it with the word of the Lord. There's something about the word of the Lord. The Bible says in John chapter 6, verse 63, there is Jesus speaking. He said, the words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. There is power trapped in the word. So spending time in the word of God, on the word of God, meditating on it, releases the power in it into your human spirit. We all know that faith is a force, is strength, and that faith comes from the word of God. So there's something in the word of God that energizes you. And the Bible also tells us in this same efficiency, which we're going to get to later on in, verse, in chapter 6, when he talked about the whole armor of God. So we will not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power. And he now said, for us to wage war effectively against these evil spirits, he says, number one, gird yourself with the belt of truth. Every weapon Paul talked about there, none of them are physical weapons. So we will not wrestle against flesh and blood. That means that every weapon that Paul talked about there are invincible. They are not physical. I want you to look at the list of weapons. All of them, all of them has their root in the word of God. You see the belt of truth. That is, that's how it started. Say, hold all your weapon. Because when they wear those weapon of old, that is the armor rather of old, they hold it up. They tie it all up. With the belt. It's the belt that holds everything together. And that belt of truth is revelation. Revelation of what? He says breastplate of righteousness. It means have a revelation of your righteousness, which is God's righteousness through Christ Jesus. He talked about the sword of the spirit. He now said that this sword of the spirit in verse 14 is the word of God. So number six, the word of God is one of those Thing that strengthens you and energizes your power. Number seven, glory be to God. Faith in that word. I've already talked about it in passing. Why I say that faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What energizes this force of faith is the word of God. So faith in the word is number seven. Number eight is not relying on your strength. I've talked about it. When you put your eyes on God instead of on your ability, God's strength is made perfect in your weakness. I talked about that at the beginning. So not relying on your strength, being weak before God. So I'm going to put it this way. When you're before God, be like a lamb. Say, Father, I don't have strength. I have no power. Energize me. Equip me, strengthen me, be like a lamb in God's presence. Be vulnerable in his presence. When you are vulnerable, God, God, I read about David. David is a master <laughs> in it. When he comes to God, whenever his enemies gang up against him, you go to God, like, I am weak, I am not strong. My enemies are all gathered against me. Oh, they are all there talking about me. They are wicked. Before God, that's why he'll be lamenting. <laughs> he'll be crying. Before God, when you look at him, you'll be like, ah, is this guy so weak? It is that same David. When he leaves the presence of God, he kills Goliath. He tears the mouth of lion. He tears the mouth of bears. So I say this. Before God, be vulnerable. Be weak. When you leave his presence after waiting, in your vulnerability, God cloaks you with power and strength. When you not come outside, roar like a lion at the devil causing you trouble. At your enemies. Why? You're no longer coming in your strength. 
you are coming equipped, energized, empowered, strengthened. Hi, hallelujah. With the power of God. Glory, glory, glory. <laughs> hallelujah. Mashakalaba Santayalakaba. You know, I quoted uh, Isaiah 40. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I think that's verse 30 and 31. When you go two verses up in verse 29, the Bible says that God gives power to the weak. Listen to me. God will never give power to the strong. His strength will never make, be made perfect in your strength. <laughs> His strength will be made perfect in your weakness. Learn it. It's one of the tools of strong men and women in God. He gives strength to the weak. And he said, to those who have no might, he increases strength. So come to God weak. But trust me, you will never leave his presence weak. His strength will come on you. Verse 9, number 9, sorry. How do you strengthen yourself? Number 9, is being a witness. I've already quoted it when I quoted Ephesians chapter 6. One of those armor is just shod your feet with the preparedness of the gospel. Always be quick to preach to someone about Christ. Always be quick to share your, your testimony with someone. Always be quick to tell people about God. That in itself strengthens you. It is a weapon. Being a witness for Christ is strength, is power, is defense. Is defense. Never forget that. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. And you shall receive power so you can witness for me. The reason the Holy Spirit energizes us and equips us with power is that we can preach. So that means as you preach, you renew and refresh and strengthen yourself in the might of the Lord. And lastly, lastly, this is the Oga Pata Pata of them all. And this is what we're going to look at more in depth next week, Tuesday. Number 10. How do you strengthen your mind? It's by working in love. It's by working in love. This is where we're going to start from on Tuesday. It's by working in love. In chapter 13, verse 1, the Bible says in that verse 1 that, see, you can speak in tongues of men, you can speak in tongues of angels. And I said, but if you don't have love, See, you're a sounding brass and clanging cymbals. You can have the gift of prophecy, mysteries, knowledge, have all the faith. You can move mountain, do all that. But if you don't have love, and he says something that's so profound. He says, you are nothing. Absolutely nothing. So the foundation of power is love. That's why you see men that operate in the power gifts of God that don't understand love, it is easier for them to derail from the faith. 